Well, I got really good news for you this morning. I don't preach long. Somebody say amen. amen. But I do believe I have a word for you this morning, so I'm going to jump right into it. I say that, but before we do that, I want to recognize our choir real quick. Choir, if you're out there, would you stand to your feet? Choir members, stand to your feet. Oh, they're over to my left there. I, I just want to let you know in front of everyone, I so appreciate your ministry, your enthusiasm, going after God. Pastor Sean, you're doing a terrific job with the choir. I hear we have a couple that are moving back to Reading and they're leaving us. Susan and Justin, where are you at? Let's, you, oh, you're staying. All right, good. But we're going to miss Susan so much. Susan's the one I hug every Sunday. We love you and appreciate you. Love you. If you're interested in joining the choir and you can sing, okay? Right, Pastor Sean? And you can sing. See Pastor Sean after the service. I just love what God's doing through the choir. Well, the title of my message this afternoon is Get on Track. I'm coming out of Hebrews chapter 11, very familiar part of the scripture. It says this, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. I want to zoom in on one word this morning, specifically, and that word is hope. Say hope. Hope is defined as a posture of enthusiastic expectation of what is to come. I want to say that again. Hope is a posture that we have of enthusiastic expectation of what's coming our way. Amen? It's about what are you expecting? I believe as a church, God wants this to be a place of ridiculous hope. I mean like crazy, ridiculous hope. When people come here, there's like an abundance of hope. Amen? A church, as a church, this is what God wants us to be. But the question is, what is our posture right now in this current environment? Take a little out of my monitors, please. What is our current posture in the midst of everything going on in the world? You know what I'm talking about. You know, the recession, you turn on the news and what's going on in the government and, and, and the prices of, of things are getting out of hand and, and all the bad news that's coming our way. The question is, what is your current posture in the middle of everything happen? You know what I'm seeing a lot of, even in the church, too many people have given up hope. You've heard it. They throw up their hands. I, I, I've lost all hope. There, some even say there is no hope. But how are we positioned personally and as a community as we enter the first week of year two as Nations Church? Are we hopeful or are we hopeless? Hopeful or hopeless? Well, let's look at that word hope. The Bible says in here 11, Hebrews 11 that faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for. Faith is the substance of hope. What does that mean? It means that faith is made out of the materials that we call hope. That faith comes from hope. So it's really, really important this morning that we get on track with hope. Amen? We got to get on track this morning with hope. I'm telling you what, faith is moving forward like a train, amen. Faith is moving like a train this morning. There you go, make that turn. <laughs> faith is going forward into a place of abundance, into a place of fulfillment of destiny. But what I want to say is with hope, with hope, we are actively building a path or track for faith to ride upon. Amen? <laughs> Sully, get back on that train. The train's about to depart, Sully. <laughs> With hope, we're actively building a track. Give them a hand. Amen. You see, hope 
What I'm trying to say is hope gives faith its direction. It positions the plane. Hope is our part in this. The Bible says that Abraham did what? Abraham hoped against all hope. When everything looked impossible, what did Abraham do? He hoped. What was he doing? He was building a track for the faith train to move forward on. He hoped he did his part. He was making way for the impossible to become possible. But listen, we, without hope, we're stuck. The train is, is off the rails. But we need to get on track with with a posture of enthusiastic expectation of what's coming to this church. Amen. I don't know about you, but I got hope in my heart about what the Lord is about to do through Nations Church, through this community, through the people of God. Listen, this is just the beginning in Jesus' name. I got hope. But I, I want to be very real with you. There is a lot of hopelessness in the world. There's a lot of hopelessness, people lacking hope. And you know, that's another posture or position. There, there, there's the posture of hope, and then there's the posture of hopelessness. And the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Could you turn me down just a bit? I don't want to blow anyone out here. Proverbs 13, 12 says hope deferred makes the heart sick. What does that word deferred mean? Deferred means to suspend. Hope deferred or hope suspended. It's when, it's when we take hope and we put hope on the shelf. You know, we, we suspend hope. We put it aside, you know, and nothing's going our way. So we suspend hope. And the Bible says that it literally makes our heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Or suspended hope brings heart sickness. What is that? That's discouragement. That's depression, discouragement and depression. And we see that in the life of Elijah in 1 Kings 19. You know the scripture, you know Elijah, but let's look at it with fresh eyes. 1 Kings 19.3 says, Elijah came to a broom brush, a bush, and he sat down under the bush and he prayed that he might die. What kind of prayer is that? Elijah, the man of faith and victory, prayed that he might die. And this is what he says. I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors that died in the wilderness. Verse 5, it says, Then Elijah laid down under the bush and fell asleep. I don't know about you, but there are times in our lives where we just want to lay down and we want to sit under that bush and it looks hopeless and you don't know how you're going to go on. You don't know how you're going to make it to tomorrow or next week or, or how, how you're going to push through these things. Elijah suspended hope and it affected things. Elijah made a choice and God honored that choice. Listen, hope is a decision. It's a choice. He chose, so God had to raise up Elisha because he gave up hope. But we have to understand that no matter what's going on in our lives, we can choose to have hope because the source of our hope is not the external circumstances. You know, Elijah was facing Jezebel, and Elijah was facing Ahab, and Elijah was facing a drought, and Elijah was facing all of these things. But we have to realize when those things come at us, our source of our hope and our faith are not these external things, but the source of my faith is hope, and the source of my hope is the reality and the revelation that we serve a good, good father. Father, my friends, he's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. That's my source of hope. It's in him. The source of hope is Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans 15, 13 actually defines God as the God of all hope. The God of all hope. Psalm 62 says, says this. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope cometh from the Lord. That, that's good news this morning. 
My hope comes from the Lord. Church, hear me out. Our hope comes from him. That's a good source of hope. That's an unending, undying, unquenching fountain of hope that comes from the God of the universe for you this morning. No matter what you face, no matter what attacks are coming your way, we serve the God of all hope. Amen. The God of all hope. Psalm 62, my hope comes from the Lord. Truly, he is my rock, and he's my salvation. He is my fortress. Therefore, we will not be shaken. The source is Jesus. The result is we will not be shaken. That's the word of the Lord. That's the word of the Lord. Because he is the foundation of our hope. He is the source of our life and of all good things. We don't have to be shaken no matter what comes our way. There's two things I want to, to go over before we end today. Two things we need to do to change our posture, our position to one of hope. Enthusiastic expectation of what's to come. One is a start and one is a stop. The first thing, we need to start declaring the word of the Lord. We need to start, listen, it, it's got to come from our mind to our mouth. Our confession has to change. Your hope has to be big enough that it changes what comes out of your mouth. Because declaration produces hope and hope produces faith and faith changes things around you we need to declare and proclaim the word of the lord look at jeremiah 29 11. we know the scripture for i know the thoughts that i think toward you says the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you to give you and a future. Hope and future are linked together. You see, the Lord is thinking about you. Oh, I love this. The Lord is thinking about how to bless you, how to give you hope, how to give you a future. He's got thoughts of peace to you. He's got thoughts of peace about you. He's got thoughts of abundance about you. He's got thoughts of a bright and amazing future. But, 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 what are you saying? What are you saying? The Bible here tells us what God thinks and what God is saying, but what are we saying? Listen, I know, I get it. Many of us have some heavy baggage, like we heard evangelist Nathan speak about last week. Many of us have very real hurts in our life from our past Listen, I have some deep hurts in my own life. I had a difficult childhood growing up. I don't want to go into all the details now, but there was a lot of tribulation and pain in my life. And from that, there, there caused a, a lot of anguish and hurt that affected my life for years. I don't, maybe it's just me. No one knows what I'm talking about this morning. You have hurts and wounds from your life going through difficult seasons. It's very real. You know, we, we, can't, we can't change our past. Uh, we can't change those that hurt us in life. Pain is going to come. Hurt is going to come. But we can change our position today in Jesus' name. You can make up your mind that you are going to be hopeful, that you're going to have an enthusiastic expectation of the future. You know, we hear it in the world all the time. Pastor Russ, you need to calm down. Don't get your hopes up. You need to brace yourself. You need to, uh, you, you, you need to just hold it back there a little bit. Stop getting your hopes up. But I think I want to say to you that, that are watching online this morning, and I want to say to you within the sound of my voice, I want to say to you, it's time for you to get your hopes up in Jesus' name. It's time to get your hopes up. 
It's time to increase your hope level in your life. I want you to turn up that volume of hope in your life. I want you to expand your capacity to hope. I want you to come and bring a bigger container for God to move through. Amen? Because I believe it with all of my heart. The best is yet to come. I, I don't know if you can tell. I really believe this. Listen, the, the, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come for Nations Church. The best is yet to come for you. Hey, the, the best is yet to come for you, for your family, in your life, in your business, in your job, with your children. Someone's going to grab a hold of what I'm saying. Somebody's going to get what I'm saying right here. Uh, someone's going to grab a hold of the revelation that God wants to release in the house of God. I'm telling you, the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. I want you to get your hopes up this afternoon. I want you to leave here flowing with hope, knowing that God can. God can. God can. God can. God can. Nothing is impossible with our God. Nothing, nothing, nothing. God can. Someone hope in the Lord. Lay some tracks down this morning of hope where God can move upon, where faith can accelerate in your life. Someone's got to take the hope and say, God can. Someone, someone here. So what we talked about, start, start declaring the word of the Lord. Start, start, start today. Speak Jesus over your family. Speak Jesus over your ministry. Speak Jesus over depression. Speak him. Speak him over every trial that comes your way. God's going to turn around some things. You're going to notice when you begin to speak the name of Jesus over those things, things are going to begin to change in your life. Things are going to begin to change in your family. Why? Because... Because it's not my word. It's the word of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. So you got to start. you got to start. But then you, you also got to stop. There's some things you got to stop. you got to stop listening. Listen, listen, listen to this, though. And if, you got a, if I got a camera shot from the live stream, zoom into me. Stop listening to the voices of fear in Jesus' name. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. L listen, this is very important. The voices of fear are way more abundant in society than the voices of hope. The voices of fear are everywhere. Our culture and our society is infested with fear. How do you know that? How do I know that? More than any time in history, we are inundated with fear. This is how I know that. I love social media, but can I be, let, let's just be really, really honest for a second. Studies say that the average person spends 180 minutes, not a week, a day on social media. In the younger generation, it's longer than that. I'm not talking about checking your email, checking the news on, you know, Fox News, or I'm not talking about checking the weather. I'm talking about social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Just kidding. I, I, I know, I know it's TikTok. MySpace, Vine, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm a, Three hours per day. Three hours per day. Listen, I do it too. You know, just scrolling, 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 scrolling. Uh, you know, social media is the largest social gathering of fear-filled declarations in the history of the world. And I want you to know, church, our brains are not built for this amount of negativity. You scroll and every other post is this person or this war or this thing is coming and, and this is going to happen to our country and this is falling apart and this is breaking and we can't afford this and it's just, it's just 
Twitter especially, it's just one thing after the next, after the next, after the next. And here scientists and doctors will tell you that this has a profound negative impact on your brain and on your body. The brain has different sections. One's called the amygdala and another's called the cerebral cortex. And those that are doctors here know much more about this than I. But when we're exposed to these levels of fear, of bad news, what happens is our brains, the amygdala, get stimulated. The cerebral cortex gets stimulated and it begins to send electrical pulses through your body. It's basically putting your body on high alert. Danger, danger, danger. It's, it's a natural instinct that God has put in us. It's a survival mechanism. But with the amount of social media We've never had access to what is happening in the remotest corners of the world. But now, like, in an instant, we know what's happening. So what does our bodies do? It sends a signal to these parts of our brain, and it puts you in a state of anxiety. And it actually releases stress hormones into your body. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. But the stress hormones are released all through your body as you're constantly meditating on all these voices of fear. That's why the latest study I read, listen to this, 52% of people live on a, in a state of danger or high anxiety every single day of their life. If that's correct, it's 50, over, over half of this audience, half of you watching me right now, your bodies are living in a constant state of anxiety and fear. It actually says in that study that it's even worse between people within the ages of 20 and 40. If you're in the ages of 20 and 40, lift your hands. Just miss out on that one. Just miss out on that one. Daniel, you're still 40, right? Oh, you just miss out on that one too. But in the age group of, of 20 to 40, 75% of that group live in a state of anxiety every day. I, I, I'm no scientist, but I got to believe this has something to do with it. I, ju I just got to believe that we're, we're feeding our fears all the time. Fear is pursuing us all the time. Alerts even right now as I'm speaking. Some are picking, you know, I'm not going to judge you if you pick up your phone, your Bible's on there. I, I get it. Or you want to check something. No, no condemnation. But even right now as I'm speaking, some of you are picking up your phone because it just buzzed and it went off and you got a breaking news alert, breaking, breaking. And there's like a, an orange siren going off at the top of it. And it's like, look at me, read me. Bad stuff's happening everywhere. I mean, this is a real thing. But as the church of Jesus Christ, we have to posture ourselves with hope and faith. But, but, but listen, online too often, it's more like this. Oh, come and magnify my fears with me. Let us exalt them all together. And we're rehearsing in our head. Over and over again. What are we saying in our head? Some of us have a playlist playing in our minds. Top 100 fears and it's on repeat loop. And on repeat, on repeat. But we can't move forward, many of us, because we can't stop looking at these things or, or looking at what happened in the past. We're, we're feeling this constant pull from the world. Fear, anxiety, depression. You guys know them. Come on out, guys. Fear, anxiety, and depression. Give them a hand as they come. Fear, anxiety, and depression are the three main robbers of hope. These three guys right here, the troublemakers. The three main thieves of our hope are these three. You see, fear, fear will come, and, and we're having this battle every day. Some of you are having it right now, and, and you know, your fear, fear comes along, and fear wants to tell you that, that the world is falling apart, and, 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 and the, the, the economy is getting worse, and, and, and then the war is coming, and, and we keep, we're battling and battling. Okay, I'm going to back up a little bit. <sighs> it's a battle. And then, you know, anxiety comes in. Anxiety wants to tell, tell you that they're coming after your children or, or they're coming after your health or, or what's, gonna, what's just around the corner. And it's a battle and it's a battle. And then depression. Depression is, depression is a devil. 
Just like Elijah faced depression, comes and says, it's time for you to give up. There's too much. You can't do it. (laughs) It's a battle. It's a struggle. But I want to tell you something. There's hope. We, we, we got to put on some hope. Hey, hey. I, I'm going to put on some hope. And I, I'm going to put on some hope. I'm going to put on my work gloves here. Sometimes you got to pull out your work gloves. Sometimes you, you, you know you got a mean business. And you got to grab onto that rope. Hallelujah. You got to hold, and you got to hold on in Jesus' name. You got to not let go so easily sometimes. And you got to look at fear and say, fear, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. And you got to say to anxiety, anxiety, for I know in whom I have believed in, and I am persuaded that he is able in Jesus' name. Oh, and then there's depression. (laughs) You need to say to depression, this one's a tough one. You need to remind depression, it's not about the outside influences of the world. It's about the source. And you need to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You need to say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And you need to remind him by saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation, and he is my victory. Hey! There's hope for you. There's hope for you. There's hope for you. There's hope for you in Jesus' name. I know you've been in a battle. I know you wanted to give up, but there's hope for you in Jesus' name. I don't care what you come out of. Jesus is the source. Jesus is our hope. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory. Sit down just for one more minute. Hallelujah. Every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Over all fear, over all anxiety, it's not only I that speaks Jesus, we speak Jesus. (laughs) We're doing this together in Jesus' name. We're in a battle, but our hope has come. Our hope has come. I wanna read this scripture and then I'll close because my time is bleeding quickly. Jeremiah 17, 7 says this. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. (laughs) Someone needs to write this verse down, underline it in your Bible. And when those voices come at you, just start declaring this. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and he will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaves will become green, and he will not be anxious even in the year of drought. I'll say that another way. And they will not be anxious in the year of recession. And they will not be anxious in the year of war. And they will not be anxious in the year of tribulation and trials. Nor will he ever cease yielding fruits. Those who trust in the Lord. In just a moment, we're going to sing, I speak Jesus. And we're going to sing it. And we're going to declare it together. But if you're watching online and you're here and... And you know you've been going through this battle, this trial. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's depression. Maybe your life is just in tatters and and, and you're going through so much. I've got such good news. Hope is here. Hope Hope is right here this morning. Hope is available to you. 
And when we hope in the Lord, miracles still happen. When we hope in the Lord, He gives us joy. When we hope in the Lord, He gives us peace and a future and a destiny. Hope is available to you if you will come and jump into the oasis of hope that God has to offer you today in Jesus' name.